Hi there! In this video I'm going to walk you through the process of creating this donut render with Bifrost and Arnold. I know this is a cliché tutorial, but I thought it could help you getting started with Bifrost. So we begin with these two simple shapes, a torus and a transformed cube. From the outliner, drag the two shapes into the Bifrost editor. Then connect each one to a mesh to volume node. After that, we can merge the two volumes. As you can see in the merge volumes, I set it to difference. Ok, converting back the volume to a mesh. Next we'll need the first in array to select the mesh and update the normal since we're going to add some noises. So if I connect the output of this part of the graph, you can see I added some noise, but only to the inner parts of the donut. In order to create the desired mask we will use a sphere scaled in one of the horizontal axes. And this is the result of the mask setup. We start with a sphere shape, convert it to a volume, and the main component is the voxel field that will convert the volume into a field that we can use for the mask. Next we have the f-curve field to manipulate the values. And finally we need to interpret the field values as scalar to be able to use it as color values. Right here I am just adding two different noises together and we can multiply the noises by the previously created mask. In the end, using the displace points, we get this result. So the next setup is just adding more noise now to the overall surface. We mix two noises and multiply the result with the previous mask, but this time inverted. As you can see, I use the F-curve to reverse the values. And this is the result. I used low values in the magnitude of the noises, one with low frequency and one with high. Don't forget to connect it to an output node at the end. The next step is to connect the result of the graph to a Bifrost Geo to Maya and then to a mesh node. From here you can duplicate the resulting Geo so we can do some editing on it. After that I remesh the Geo, you can also do some retopo or use the auto retopo tools in Maya. I have also a low res version to use in the liquid simulation. Use the same remesh command, adjusting the edge length for a lower polycount. As for the liquid simulation is quite simple. I start with this half pipe and in the Bifrost menu create a liquid. Then select the liquid container, shift select the donut and create a collider. I use default settings apart from viscosity. Let me just increase the voxel size so it runs a bit faster. After finding a good resting frame, enable the meshing in the bifrost shape. Here I change a bit the values to make the mesh thinner as I wanted. Let's decrease the voxel size to have more resolution and the only attribute I changed was the viscosity, I have set it to 17. Next I created a motion field to add some turbulence, so it creates some irregularities in the shape of the liquid. And finally a kill plane to remove any particles below the ground. After finding a good resting frame, you can duplicate the mesh as I'm not creating any animation. You can take some time and delete the extra shapes from the liquid simulation and also the, using the grab tool, make the mesh follow the contour of the donut. Now for the toppings, which is just a scatter point setup. I have these two meshes, a bended cylinder and a small sphere. The first step is to drag the icing to a new graph. From there we use the scatter points entering the desired value. Then we attach the meshes to the create instances node. And we can randomize a bit the scale and finally the rotation. 
Next, let's see the shading and rendering setup. So for the toppings, we use a standard surface with some roughness. And for the base, a color jitter node, starting with a base color and adjusting the hue shifts. For the chocolate icing, I just used a dark brownish color for the base and subsurface. There's also a noise as a slight bump map to break a bit the reflections. So now the donut itself. I started by assigning a Lambert so I can paint some vertex information to use as a mask. So I filled the entire shape with black and painted the inner parts with white. Then named the color set to Mask Borders. And now with the user data color node, paste the name of the color set in the attribute field. Ok, I started with a bread texture I found online, then using a triplanar node as I don't have proper UVs, and did also some color correction. Then I connected the result to a layer node, masking out with the vertex mask within the user data color. In the third layer, we have a noise remapped with a ramp to give some color variation. In the second layer, I have a grunge map, adding again some variation and contrast to the color. I also have some displacement, for that I am extracting a black and white version from the inner bread texture and mixing it with a 50% grey value, as it will be the default scalar zero value in the displacement attributes. In this case I want to disable auto bump, as it was creating too much noise. It looks much better without it, as you can see by the renders. And these are the displacement settings. Let's do the final render. And this is it for the amount of time I set for this project. This is the result I came up with. Again, this was just an excuse to learn some more Bifrost stuff. And I hope you learned something as well. Thanks for everyone that helped me with the voxel field setup in the Bifrost Discord, as I had no idea how to do it, especially Sepu that is always so generous. Ok guys, thank you for joining me in this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.